Hey, you guys. Uh, I wanted to answer one of the questions that were sent in by our brother Frank. Uh, in a nutshell, his question was, uh, I was watching this channel and this person says that the parable of the talents, now talents doesn't mean like uh, gifts like we have, like uh, she's talented, she can sing. Talents was a measure of weight uh, for money. So like a talent of gold was worth X amount. Right, so talents is just a measure of money based on the weight of the metal. All right, so uh, we see the same parable or very similar one in Luke 19. So the parable of the talents is Matthew 25. We see a very similar, if not the same one, it's probably two different accounts of the same parable. Now, in the scriptures, it says that Jesus came one but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to fulfill the promises given to the fathers, right? So he spoke to them always in parables. It said whenever he spoke to them, it was in parables and he didn't not speak in parables. There was not a time where he spoke to crowds without speaking in a parable. It says so that, you know, those that have ears to hear could hear. Um, others would not. We. It, this is God's thing. Okay, I can't. I, I can't get into that whole thing. But I will say, uh, it's not what some are saying. So, uh, and I'll show you the context. You uh, ultimately, again, I'm your sister in Christ, and you need to go to the scriptures. You, if you've trusted Christ, uh, what He did on Calvary gave you eternal life. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. He is uh, the teacher of all truth. Uh, you go to God's word and, and ultimately you have to be convicted, uh, with what you believe it says. All I do is show you the context and why I believe it's what it's saying. Okay. Ultimately it is up to you to verify that. Um, we shouldn't trust anybody just blindly. We need to research it and go to God's word pray on it, meditate on it, and uh, see if you can see it, right? Well, Frank asked, he says, look, I was watching a channel, and he says that this parable of the talents disproves Osas, or once saved, always saved. Uh, no, I don't think it has anything to do with that at all, and I will show you why. Um, he, here you go. A person that has trusted Christ has already been passed from death to life, and the life is eternal. Born of God, was dead, but was quickened together, or brought to life. Remember the quick and the dead? It means the living and the dead. Uh, brought to life in Christ. Already seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that is, uh, it's not possible to undo that. Uh, that really belittles uh, the accomplishment and the victory we have in Christ. And Christians are supposed to have joy and peace and to know we have eternal. We're supposed to know this, okay? The Spirit bears witness that we are the children of God. So let's look at it and, and, and see what's going on here. So what do we know so far? One, this is two the nation of Israel. Jesus came but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was his first coming. He had to deal with that first, first and foremost, right? Then we know he had not died and risen yet, all right? See, revelation is given progressively in scripture. So when Paul said the fullness of time had come, right? Now we understand it. Even though we see through the glass darkly, even those before the cross, they were looking forward to the cross. They just weren't sure who that was. They didn't, they knew the attributes of the Messiah. The rabbinical writings imply that they thought the conquering king and the suffering servant were two different individuals. Uh, the, the bottom line is he had not died and risen yet. All right. And that he was speaking to the nation of Israel. What else do we know about that? Well, Paul tells us that many, a remnant believed, a remnant did. We got to remember the first 
believers and the disciples were of the nation of Israel. They were all Jews, or I don't want to say Jews, I want to say Hebrews. Um, Jews usually refers to Benjamin and Judah, but we'll just say of the nation of Israel, okay? But we also know that a large majority were going to reject him, no matter how much evidence they had, and they had a lot, all right? They were without excuse. Many of them rejected him. They not only uh, uh, rejected him with all the evidence, they knew the miracles were there. They knew he was of God, but they still tried to find another reason for his power, that he was a sorcerer. He got, he cast out devils through the power of devils, uh, that his mother was a fornicator and he was born of fornication. Remember when they said, we, we be not born of fornication, hinting that he was, okay, but he was born of a virgin, just like it was prophesied in scripture, but they would not see it. Okay, see when the nation of Israel was given the oracles of God, the teachings of God, all of the prophets, everything they needed, they should have known who he was. Okay, they should have known, but they rejected him. Their hard hearts, they did not want, they did not want Jesus to tear the veil uh, uh, in, in the temple. They wanted to be the ones that were the mediator between the people and God. They didn't like their power being taken. So uh, we're going to see that this is actually, and see if you can see it, a message, a warning to the people of Israel that because they've been given so much, gifts, talent, money is used for the revelation they had of him that God has given them. And that they're going to be responsible for what they do with that information. All right. Now, I have seen people use this. I may have even done it very possibly. And I'd have no problem with it if people say, well, this is not about salvation. It's about discipleship uh, and about being rewarded for the works you do. I, I don't I don't think that's what's going on here. And if I did interpret it that way before, I'll go back and look. I'll take it down because after looking at this, I really believe this is to the nation of Israel uh, and is about the gifts, the oracles, the revelation, the knowledge that nation was given of God and of Jesus. And they were going to be responsible for what they did with it. All right. So you can, I'm not going to read both of these parables. It would take too long, but I will, let me go over here now. We'll go to uh, Luke chapter 19, and this will help you see the context. In this one, it says pounds, but uh, that's a, it's an old English term for money. But we'll, we'll, just, we'll just use that, okay? It says, and as they heard these things, this is um, Luke 19, verse 11. As they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. So they, they wanted a conquering king right then. He, he didn't look the way they wanted him to. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country <clears throat> to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And said to them, occupy till I come. Hmm. What did God do? Told the nation of Israel, here's the, uh, here's the oracles of God. You preserve them, take care of them, keep my statutes, keep my ways. They all point to my son, which they weren't real clear on yet. And, and you're going to do until, until the Savior comes. And many of them were saying that when the Messiah comes, we're going to know all things. Remember the woman at the well said that. So they were waiting on him. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained 10 pounds. And he said, well, well, thou good servant. 
because thou has been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second king saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, or severe, harsh. Thou takest up, thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. You think that's who I am? That's what you'll get. All right? Thou wicked servant, thou knewest I was an austere man, taking up that I had not laid down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest thou not my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? So I could have made interest if you just put it in the bank. At least do that. And he said to him that stood by, take from him the ten, take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you that every one which hath shall be given, and from him that has not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Okay? I believe this money is representing the information, the revelation God gave the nation of Israel, the spiritual blessings he put on that nation. And it, it is a warning about rejecting the one they don't want to reign over them. Right? Now, and, and I can see you can't apply it, you know, well, uh, if you have something that God gives you something, uh, then you should be uh, faithful with that and serve the Lord with it. And another part of this parable, I believe, is their hate that Gentiles eventually are going to be saved. They kept the, the, the knowledge of the living God within them. They did. It within that little nation. And he said, when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And this is right before he gets the uh, donkey and rides in being proclaimed king. Now, if you go to Matthew 25, you see something similar. Right before this is the, the parable of the foolish virgins. Was it? They're, they're not ready for his coming. Israel did not recognize the bridegroom when he came. All right. Holy Spirit is, is represented by oil in the scripture. They did not have eyes to see him when he came. Now you can apply this to a later time if you want, but he's speaking to Israel. You can take this and try to apply it to the church, but this is not to the church. This is a warning to Israel that they need to recognize who he is. They have all of the information and they're going to be responsible because they were given so much. Now, when it says, we know that you reap where you sowed not, what's that, Gentile nations? You didn't reveal, you didn't give the oracles to the Gentiles. You didn't, there's many places in here where he says, I have a people that are not a people. I have sheep not of this fold. And then we find out, he said, Abraham will be the father of many nations and that we're children of Abraham by faith in Jesus, right? A lot of them hated that. They despised it. And Jesus even told him, you're going to see people come from the east and the west and sitting down with your patriarchs, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom and you yourselves thrust out because it's about Jesus because they reject him. Now they see him as a harsh, impossible man. That's, that's what the law does. But when they had eyes to see, because it tells us that the law was given so that every now may be stopped and the whole world may become guilty before God so that sin might become exceedingly sinful, right? Many were self-righteous and couldn't see that. They just saw God as a harsh taskmaster that had to be obeyed. They could not see it was to break them so that when the Savior came, they would receive him uh, because they needed a Savior, right? There's many places in here. I really think this has nothing at all to do with the church now. 
I really think this is a warning to them to recognize who he is. And because they had all that information, uh, information, all that revelation, they were responsible for rejecting them. Now, a key to this is when it says, we will not have this man reign over us. They didn't want Jesus as king. So to me, I, I don't know why they would apply this to losing salvation. There's nothing in here about saved people or, and, and let me just say, when you're doing uh, a, a parable, not every detail fits into something. Like you, you can't make them too literal. A parable is an overall picture representing something else. It's to tell a story or a lesson. So don't take uh, like things and go, and this represents this, and this represents this, and this. Re it's not always going to work that way. It's an overall picture. And I believe this is clearly warning them uh, not to reject him. Uh, we see the, the parable of the, the virgins. We see this in Luke and in Matthew. So it's, it's a warning to Israel that they are responsible. They will answer for it. They were given everything to know who he is. Uh, if you want to apply it to service, that you'll be rewarded and whatever you're given, uh, you need to use it for the Lord and he'll give you more. Uh, and if he sees you faithful with little, he'll He'll give you more of it. Sure, that's a very practical application uh, of, of these parables. Sure, you can, you can use it that way. And I believe that's probably true too. Um, but I think this is really about the nation of Israel not recognizing him, having everything, all the gifts God gave them for them to acknowledge who he was and that they can feign ignorance, but they're not ignorant. They're going to be responsible for it. The bottom line is they don't want this man reigning over them. That's it. So I, I don't see this having anything to do with a saved person sealed by the Holy Spirit, uh, later losing salvation. No. First of all, you're not saved by works. So even if this did represent, like the, if the talents or the pounds represented spiritual gifts that you didn't use, you're not saved because you use your gifts. Now we're saved unto good works. And a lot of people do translate this for that. I don't, I don't see that there anymore. I, I see it in its con it original context was to the nation of Israel about rejecting him. You can see, we don't want this man reigning over us as king. It says it clearly in the scriptures. So um, Frank, sweetheart, no, I, I really don't see this at all applying to that. Uh, uh, when you're looking for bad news in the scripture and you see the Lord as a hard, austere man, you'll find it. But if you got your grace goggles on, as I say, you see Jesus in everything. I, I don't have anything to bring. And, and I love those old hymns. I, I would not dare approach the Lord and, and argue anything of myself. I got nothing, Lord. The only thing I have is that Jesus came and died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. It's his blood alone I rest and stand on right here. That's it, Lord. I have nothing to argue. No matter how much I served him, no matter how, it's nothing. I don't deserve to be here. I'll never deserve heaven or eternal life or being with the Lord forever. I'll never deserve it. I stand right here on his blood and that is it and that is all. Everything else, we can we can talk about it if you agree or disagree on what works uh, uh, are rewarded or not rewarded. Fine. We, we should do anything God asked us to do. You know why? Because he saved us. Period. Like we should do everything the Lord asked us to do. Because he saved us. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that people think we're telling people not to live for the Lord and not to serve the Lord. I believe in it. believe in living my faith. I believe he's worthy of praise every day. Even when uh, things are terrible, he's still good. He's worthy of praise. And so uh, just because he saved us, we should do anything and everything he asked of us. Um but I really just don't see that that's what this parable is talking about. It's uh, clearly before his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, a warning to the nation of Israel that they are going to be responsible 
for what they do with the gifts, the talents, the pounds, the money represents all the spiritual fellowship God had with that nation. And the, the key here is we don't want this man reigning over us. That's the key there. Okay, you guys. God bless.